Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Shivan and I make videos about medical school and university. If you like my videos, if you like my content, if you end up liking this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. Today's video is going to be about something really important. It's going to be about choosing a med school. How do you choose a medical school? Because that's a very important decision and it's a decision that could decide whether you end up getting offers from a school or not. So basically, I'm going to break down all the factors and the procedure I think you should follow if you're choosing a med school and that will basically direct you towards making the best choices. Just for a frame of reference, there are 33 med schools in the UK out of which 25 are in England, 5 are in Scotland, and uh, 2 are in Wales and 1 in Northern Ireland. Uh, you're probably already familiar with the fact that you have to choose 5 choices on UCAS, out of which only 4 can be medical schools. So you have to narrow down these 33 medical schools to just 4. And let's talk about how you should be doing that. First thing you want to look at is eligibility and there are two parts to eligibility. The first part of eligibility is objective eligibility criteria. So basically define numbers that they give you where if you don't meet these particular numbers in terms of your statistics or your profile, you would be immediately rejected. Your application won't even be considered. Some examples of objective eligibility criteria could be the minimum predicted grade you should have to apply to a medical school. For example, if it's A star AA or 766 in IB and you have less than that and you apply to that med school, you will not get in. They'll not look at any other part of your application. The UCAT can also be a, a sort of um, objective eligibility criteria for some universities that give cutoffs, but usually these cutoffs are released later on, so don't worry about that. Another criteria could be the uh, age requirements for your medical school. For example, I'm 17 years old right now and I will be 17 years old the day my med medical school starts. Therefore, I couldn't apply to many med schools in the UK, a uh, great number of them, because the one of the entry criteria was that you have to be 18 when the course starts and some of these universities are Imperial, uh, UCL and uh, uh, Queen Mary's Barts. Uh, so, these first of all you want to look at your objective eligibility criteria and you want to cross out all the universities which you just don't meet the criteria for because you already have no chance of getting into these universities the second factor with eligibility is subjective entry criteria and subjective things are like your UCAT score or your um, number of your, your number of GCSEs, the work experience you've done, the volunteering you've done, how you think your profile is as a whole and just generally evaluating your profile on a subjective level where you don't know exactly what is required but you have a vague idea of whether you'll be successful at a particular university or not. For example, King's does not have a UCAT cutoff. But me, for me personally, as an international applicant, I knew that if I got less than, let's say, 650, I, there would be no point applying. Even though there's no cutoff, I know that the chances of me getting with such a low score is not very real. These form the eligibility criteria and you'd want to use these things to cross out certain medical schools out of the 33 medical school lists that you have. After this, you're left with the number of medical schools that you think you have a chance of getting into. And now you want to further eliminate med schools out of these based on other factors or your own preference factors. But before that, I'd recommend using a strategy of two and two for the medical schools you're choosing. 
and by that I mean choosing two medical schools that have potential risk that you think you may not get an offer from and two medical schools that you're very confident about getting an offer from because your statistics, your application, it is way above the entry criteria for them. It's way above the standards that they require. Your, you have an amazing application, you may be consider all your universities low risk but uh, basically that's quite unlikely so you want to choose two universities you're aspiring to go to or you really want to go to but you think could be high risk and two that could be low risk and now you want to play around this depending on how many university on how your application is if you're just meeting the requirements for all the universities most of your uni uh, your list will be high risk and if your application is really good most of your universities will be low risk so now we move to the preference part now you make decisions based on what you like about the medical schools you narrowed the list down to so uh, preference is based on two factors academic factors and non-academic factors so I would suggest you give more importance to academic factors because um, at the end of the day you're going to med school to get educated however uh, let me just list some of them out for you so you can consider them academic factors include course structure the such as whether it's an integrated course or a traditional course or a problems uh, problem based learning course it also includes how long your course is whether it's five years or it's six years um, other academic factors could be the amount of research a university does and one really important one is intercalation so basically in most medical schools you have an opportunity to intercalate uh, intercalating is basically doing a year of specialization in a particular subject related to medicine so you could do your uh, intercalation in something like medical genetics public health or uh, in a specific area of medicine as well you could do it in statistics you could basically it's an IBSC, which stands for Intercalated Bachelor of Sciences. It's sort of a second degree that you get. So you want to decide whether you want to do intercalation and there's certain universities that mandate it and there are others that give intercalation as an option. So you'd want to check out that whole situation with intercalating when you're applying. Non-academic factors about your med school could be the location whether it's in the city you're living in, whether you want to be in a big city like London or whether you want to be in a small city somewhere else in the UK. So basically your preference of location, the type of place you want to go to, then whether it's a campus university or a city university, basically whether you'll be studying on a campus or whether you'll be studying in a university that's spread around the city. For example, I preferred going to a city university. That's why um, I really wanted to go to King's. A non-academic factor could be the diversity of your university, whether you want to go to a university with a lot of international students or a lot of, you know, international involvement, or whether you want to be in a more, you know, UK central med school with a lot of uh, local students. Uh, that basically makes up all the the whole procedure and now based on these factors of preference you'd want to narrow those remaining med schools down that you narrowed down in the first place through the eligibility criteria and you'd want to choose four among them and you want to make sure that you have at least two low risk universities within those four that you've narrowed it down to and um, that's basically how you choose a med school because you at the end of the day medical school is medical school wherever you do it and obviously you want to enjoy it wherever you go but you also want to maximize the your chances of getting into a med school because you don't want to apply to four like universities that you think are really nice and but you don't have the profile for and end up with absolutely no offers like that would be a disaster so you want to apply strategically. You want to just make the best choices you can to maximize your chances of getting into med school to also maximize your chances of getting into the med school 
that you want to get into. That's the entire video on how you choose a med school or how I would recommend choosing a med school. I hope you liked it, I hope you found it useful and if you did, be sure to hit the like button down below and to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to share this video with anyone who you think might need it and yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.